Howdy, AP Pre-Gal, it is Ms. Kosh. I am continuing my notes from section 112. Um, these are transformations. I feel my students come to me with a very strong understanding of how to transform graphs and, um, and know how to interpret an equation. Like, my kids could tell me pretty consistently, if I have something like y is equal to negative two times x minus three squared plus five, they'd know it was reflected over the x-axis, they'd know it had a vertical, um, well, I'm practicing AP's language, a vertical dilation by a factor of two, they would know that it was shifted to the right three and up five. Um, and so they're pretty comfortable with that. And the first part of my notes dealt with, here's a graph, and now do the transformations. What I wanna do um, in these notes, um, in the notes today is to work through a little more of how AP likes to ask these questions. They do the best they can to make what seems like an easy topic tricky. <laughs> um, so they like to work with tables. I was asking my kids, I think it was my seventh period that were giving me random numbers, um, except one of the numbers they gave me was four digits and I decided, no, I don't want to mess with that. So. Um, AP likes to ask transformation questions when they've been given a different table. There were some like pick the table that is, represents this transformation. So I want to work through some of those and show you how I think about these problems. Um, so what I did is we created this random table, uh, the function f, and then I have a function g, a function h, and a function k that all deal with transformations of f. Okay, and so then we're going to evaluate the following. Um, so f of 11, well what we can do here, we know that that's not an f, did you catch that from me? I apologize. That was a G. Um, G of 11 means that we're saying this would be G of 11 would equal 2 times F of 11 plus 5. So now I can look at my table, and here is, and when X is 11, um, F of 11 is 57. Um, I think my kids picked that number. Um, okay, so 114 plus 5 is 119. And there we go. The next one, f of negative 3, same idea. This would be equal to 2 times f of negative 3 plus 5. Um, and so negative 3 is right here. Oh, another annoying number. 2 times 46, I think 2 times 45 is 90, so 92 plus 5 is equal to 97. Okay, now we look at the function h, and h has, um, but we can also, with each of these, we can also think about this intuitively. And what it is, is we go to our function, um, so like g of 11 would go to f of 11 and, um, and vertically dilate it by a factor of 2. So if we look at this, we would take that number, multiply it by 2, and then shift it up 5. Um, I found it kind of straightforward to just plug it into the equation and work from there. Um, with h, h of 1 would be equal to f of negative and then 1 plus 2. So what is this doing to our graph? This is a reflection over the y-axis. Um, I remember these because these will change your domain, whereas um, uh, a, a, a negative out front won't change your domain. Like, for example, with that one, if you think about, um, if I have y is equal to the square root of x, um, my domain here goes from um, 0 to infinity. If I then make it a negative root x, I still can only plug in positive or zero. Um, so my domain is still zero to infinity. It's when I put the negative underneath, oh, what am I doing? Radical underneath, there we go. Um, this one changes my domain to go from negative infinity to zero. We will talk about rational functions more later, but there you go. Um, okay, so on this one, so it's gonna have a reflection over, we just said a reflection over the y-axis, and then um, and then we're gonna, then we're shifting it, this was, um, we would shift it to the left two. So you would take your point wherever it is, reflect it over the y-axis, and then go left two. Or we could just say, well, this is equal to f of, um, this is three, so negative three. What is f of negative three? 46. On these, to be honest with you, when it comes to these table problems, I find it a little more, um, I find more confidence in plugging it in and solving the equation. Um, so that, I get um, better results personally. Okay, so this one, h of 11 would be equal to f of negative, negative 11 plus 2, right? Yes, so then this is negative 9, make it positive, is a positive 9, it equals f of 9. If we look at our table, f of 9 is equal to 62. 
Okay, k is the new function, and there's more things happening here. So this one would have a reflection over the um, x-axis. We would have a vertical dilation by a factor of 3. We're shifting it to the right 1 and then up 4. Um, so k of, k of 26 would be equal to negative 3 times f of 26 minus 1 plus 4. Okay, 26 minus 1 is 25, um, and f of 25 was equal to 1. Oh, that was nice. Okay, so I have a negative 3 times 1 plus 4. Negative 3 plus 4 is equal to positive 1. Oh, I'm sorry, you couldn't see my work. I think I may have zoomed in too much. Okay, 16, um, k of 16 would be equal to a negative 3 f of 16 minus 1 plus 4 using that equation right there. Um, this becomes a negative 3 times f of 15. f of 15 is 102. That gives me 306. So a negative 306 plus 4 is going to be a negative 302. And there we go. Okay, so that first section was just plugging it in and evaluating. Now what we want to do is they've given us the y value and we need to find the corresponding x. Okay, and so with this one, our g of x, if you remember, was 2f of x plus 5. And so this is now equal to 209. So I'm going to subtract 5. That gives me 204. Divide it by 2 and I get 102. So this becomes f of x is equal to 102. Well, hopefully that's in our table. It is. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, and it corresponds to when x is equal to 15. Okay, so x would equal 15. So g of 15 is equal to, sorry, g of 15 is equal to 209. Okay, this one, um, well, I'm just having fun. Here we go. I'll do the next one too. I was thinking maybe I'll skip some of these. Okay, subtract 5. I'm at 38. Divide by 2. I'm at 19. So when does f of x equal 19? Hopefully that was something I picked in the table. It was. Good job. Okay, and that means that x equals 4. H gives us the equation um, f of negative x plus 2 is equal to 1. Okay, so now on this one, f of what is equal to 1? Well, we can go back and look at this table. f of 25 is equal to 1. So this right here becomes this negative x plus 2 is equal to 25, and now we can solve that equation. Because um, it was everything. It was f of what? Well, the what was this negative x plus 2. Um, divide that, subtract x equals, divide by negative 1, it's negative 25. Subtract 2 is negative 27. I ran out of space, so there you go. Okay, the, ne other, the next h is a similar uh, format. f of negative x plus 2 equals 37. Let's go back and look at our table. Do we have a 37? We sure do. That's when x equals negative 1. So this negative x plus 2 equals negative 1, becomes a positive 1, subtract, uh, so x equals negative 1. And then, okay, so now our k is a different function. Um, I might just need more space. This was getting a little ridiculous. Um, okay, so k of x was equal to a negative 3f of x minus 1 plus 4, and this is now supposed to be equal to um, negative 107. Here, you know, maybe you can see the table at the top. Okay, so we subtract 4. This gives me negative 3f of x minus 1 equals negative 111. Divide by negative 3. Uh, 3 goes in there 3 times with 2, so 7. And a negative divided by negative is a positive. Hopefully that showed up here. Ah, oh, it does, 37. Um, so, when, so this x minus 1 will equal negative 1. Add 1 and x equals 0. So this was um, k of 0 is equal to 107. I guess the answer would be x is equal to 0, however you want to write that. Okay, and then the next one, k of x is a negative 3 f of x minus 1 plus 4 is equal to negative 167. Um, subtract 4, negative 171. Does that, that is divisible by 3. That's convenient. Well, I did it on purpose. Um, 3 goes in there, 5, 7. Okay. Um, oh, and that was something from our table. So this, x minus 1, will equal 11. Sorry. And so x equals 12. Cool. x equals 12. You can't see what I'm doing. There we go. Okay. Then I also saw that they like these problems where they give you 
I saw something like this on AP Classroom. Um, and they tell you, they've given you the, the format um, and they're asking you to, to interpret the words and figure out what that's gonna give you in the equation. Okay, so in the plane, the graph of J is constructed by, uh, constructed by applying three transformations to the graph of F in this order. A horizontal dilation by a factor of three. Okay, horizontal dilation by a factor of three means that our P value right here, this, is the absolute value of P will equal three. Okay, so they didn't tell us if there's a reflection or not, and it could be plus or minus um, three. So let's just hold on to that for a second. A vertical dilation by a factor of two. Okay, so a vertical dilation, um, if it has a factor of two, that means that this Q value right here is gonna be one over two. So that means Q, well, technically the absolute value of Q is equal to one over two. Okay, um, I think that they should tell us if there's any um, uh, reflections. A vertical translation by four units. Okay, so that tells us that this R value that we have is gonna go up four. Okay, so let's write an equation. Um, so J of X would be equal to P would be three. We didn't, they didn't tell us we had a, trans, um, a reflection, not a transformation. Um, and so let's assume that we don't. And then it's F of our Q value is one half. So I could do X over two or one half X and then plus four. Okay, and so now they want me to find J of 12. So J of 12 would be equal to three times F of half of 12 is six. Um, so I'm gonna look back. F of, y'all, I think I messed up. Hang on just a second. Um, did I do my horizontal, a horizontal dilation? Oh, and a vertical. <laughs> Did you catch that before I did? If so, very good. Comment down below and tell me that um, that I'm good but not perfect. Okay, um, let me try this again. That's all wrong. <laughs> Go back and delete that in the last little bit. Uh, somebody comment down below when I started making a mistake at what time that was and then tell me now when I start to get it right. <laughs> so if anybody wants to skip it, they can, but I'm too lazy to do that myself. Okay, how about we talk about a horizontal dilation being not P, but that would be equal to the Q value. Okay, so the Q value is gonna be one third um, because it's gonna stretch it horizontally by a factor of three. A vertical is gonna pull it this way. Um, and so that's the P value and it's gonna equal two. And then R is still four. Okay, well luckily we caught, I caught my mistake before I published. I mean, I've missed many other mistakes. Okay, so P is two, so it's two F of one third X uh, plus four. Okay, so let's see if this works for us. So J of 12 would equal two times oh, F of, here's my parentheses, one third of 12 is four, plus four. Do we know anything about, we do, oh good. Okay, we do know something about um, X of, uh, F of four. And so this is two times 19 plus four. Sorry, you couldn't see what I was doing. 38 plus four is equal to 42. Huh, goodness, that was embarrassing. Um, I mean, anyway. I'm good, but I'm not perfect. So what did we say? J of 12 ultimately equals 42. Okay. Um, let's see if I can do this next one correctly the first time. Fingers crossed. In an XY plane, the graph of J is constructed by applying three transformations to the graph in this order. A reflection over the x-axis. Okay, reflection over the x-axis means that, that we have to make this P value. P is going to be less than zero. Um, and then a vertical dilation by a factor of three. Okay, so in particular, P is gonna be equal to a negative three. Um, a horizontal dilation, so pulling it this way by a factor of two, so that means Q is equal to, I lied, horizontal dilation by a factor of one half, which means that Q is equal to two. And a vertical translation by negative one units, so this R will equal negative one. Okay, so what do we have? We have J of X is equal to a negative three F of two X minus one. Okay, and so they want to know J of 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Oh, I think that's the same value we used a second ago. This was 19. Um, I don't know that I intended to do that, but there you go. Um, so negative 3 times 19 minus 1. Negative 3 times 20 would be negative 60, so that's negative 57 minus 1, negative 58. And there we go. Okay, I have more um, to the notes for today, but I think this is a good stopping point for this video. Um, so what I intend to do next is the second half of those notes where 
they give us a table and then they ask us to create additional tables. Um, and it's straightforward when you only, well, I will teach that to you in the next video. So stick around, come back for more. And then I intend to try and teach Mr. Passwater's notes from this section. Um, I have not looked at them, so we'll see how that goes. All right, like, subscribe, comment, um, tell me how I can help you, and tell me down below when I messed up and where you can skip to if you want to help your fellow students out. Good luck. Go study.